the people of God. Praise the Lord, people of God. I thank God for Jesus. And I thank God for just another opportunity together with the saints. Because my strength come when I gather with the saints of God. Hallelujah. And we certainly thank God for everyone that has joined. Thank God for our mothers. And let's continue to pray, saints. Let's continue to pray, saints. Let's pray one for another. Amen. Things might be going well with you, but you pray for others. Amen. Amen. And we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. We're supposed to have the second half of our business session, but we don't do business before we do the word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to go right into 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Three verses of scripture. And it reads, <clears throat> And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, hear, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they, that they too went over on dry ground. And we thank God for the reading of the word of the Lord on tonight. And I just want to talk a few moments, and I don't know if I get through this lesson on tonight, but I've come with a message for Agape. And that message is, everybody can't go where God is taking you. Everybody can't go where you are going. Everybody can't go where God is taking you. One of the greatest blessings that we can experience or we can receive is to know who to partner with. You cannot partner with everybody. Mm -mm. Wrong people can destroy you and right people can push you to your destiny. And it's important that you understand that not everybody can go with you where God is taking you. And I want to talk about that because many times we hold on to people and things when they are detrimental to our souls. In our scripture that we read on tonight, we have two characters in, and there's a play on the names, Elijah and Elisha. They had a unique relationship. Elisha, the, the younger prophet, saw something in Elijah, the older prophet, that he desired to be like. He respected the anointing on uh, Elijah's life. And let me stop right here and say this. You would never receive anything from a man or a woman of God unless you respect the anointing that rests on their life. You will never, never receive anything from God, from a man or a woman of God, unless you learn to respect the anointing that rests on their lives. Because simply put this way, you can't learn from somebody that you resent. If you resent somebody, you can't learn from them. But Elisha saw something in Elijah that he desired, and he was determined to stay in a relationship regardless of what it cost him. Because his friends and his fellow prophets told him, your master is dying. Don't let me get ahead of myself. When Elijah told Elisha to stay in Bethel, the young prophet said he refused to do that. He said in that second verse of 2 Kings chapter two, and I hope you write these scriptures down or you have your Bible open. And Elisha said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. Wait right here, I pray thee. For the Lord has sent me to Bethel. 
And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Then when we look at the fourth verse, when Elijah told him that you stay back here, I'm going to Jericho. But Elijah told him again, mm -mm, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So what did they do? The two of them went to Jericho. <clears throat> Why? Because he saw something in Elijah. He saw the anointing on this man and he knew that he had to be with him so that he can glean. Mm -hmm. so that the anointing will fall on him. And then Elijah went all the way to the other side of the Jordan River. When we look at verse six, he said again, Terry, stay right here. Wait right here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. <clears throat> and he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, as the Lord liveth and my thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Each time Elijah told him he was going somewhere, Elisha turned around and said, I'm going with you. I'm going with you, man of God. And each time when you look at these scriptures, the sons of the prophets, the sons of the prophets, and there was 50 of them, told Elisha, the Lord <clears throat> is going to take away your master from you. Mm -hmm. He had the detractors on the sign line, the sons of the prophet. They knew because they were prophet, they could see, they could read the time that Elijah's time was already up. And Elijah's, his response to them was, as the Lord liveth, I will not leave thee. I, he told Elijah, I will not leave thee. But when the prophets, or the sons of the prophets started talking, he told them, hold your peace. I don't want to hear what you got to say. He didn't stay there and entertain them in any way. Hold your peace. When you look at verse three and five of this second chapter of second Kings, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha. Here the prophets were at Bethel and said it unto him, knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? And he, Elisha said, yeah, I know it. Hold your peace, hold your peace. He didn't try to go into great detail what he was trying to do. He just said, hold your peace. And when they came to Jericho, they approached Elisha again and said, knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? And he said once again, I know it, but you hold your peace. I don't want to discuss it anymore. Sometimes you got to put a stop to folks filling your head up with stuff, planting a seed in your heart and in your mind. Now, who were these sons of the prophets? <clears throat> Let's look at who they were. The sons of the prophets, there were 50 of them. They were students of the prophets. They had prophetical schools. They were taught, they were led, they were mentored by the older prophets, such as Elijah. They were more experienced and well-known like Elisha. And they were closely associated with the ministry of the man of God. They didn't believe in worshiping Baal. Put it this way, they were right there in the church with them, shouting and blessing and praising God. Mm -hmm. Right there in the church. They weren't on the outside. They taught the same thing. They prophesied the same thing. Hallelujah. Then they were known for prophesying the power of God. When you look at that seventh verse, it says, and 50 men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan, the prophets, the men of God, the prophets of God. We're going to go and stand back here because we're going to see this happen. And you know what? They were not on the outside of the church looking in. They were on the inside of the church doing what was going on. But we're going to stand back and see what's going to 
happen. We're going to see if this ministry, if Elijah's ministry is going to fail, because we know he's getting ready to die. You can see he's old in age now. He has done all of his exploits, and he's getting ready to go off the scene. So we're going to stand back and wonder what's going to happen. Look at Elisha following the man of God, waiting on the man of God. Glory to God. So let me tell you something. Anytime you wait or you, you do something for the pastor, for the leader, and you try to make the low light, you're going to have those detractors that's right there in you, blessing and praising God, standing back saying, child, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. But Elijah was determined to stay connected to Elijah. And when Elijah smoked the river Jordan and his mantle and the waters parted, Elijah, Elisha was right there with him while the sons of the prophets. Now get this, if they were sons of the prophets, look like to me, they would have known I need to stay with this man of God because when he leave here, I need his anointing. Mm -hmm. They do from afar off, but only Elijah crossed the Jordan River with Elijah. And I said some time ago, some years ago, that the train is pulling out from the station. Glory to God. And this is the same manifestation. Elijah said, I'm going home. I'm going home. You better get on this train because I'm leaving here. Glory to God. God was about to do something in the life of Elijah, but he first had to take him to a place where the crowd could not go. And the same is true today. Every time God is about to do something new in your life, whether it's the new anointing, whether it's taking you to the next level of your destiny, whether it's moving you into a season of prosperity, God will lead you to a place where the crowd, and the crowd is your friends. The crowd is sometimes your family members will not be able to go. Because I told you before, everybody can't go where you are going. Uh-huh. They can't go where you're go going. When you look at the Bible, when God was about to do something in Moses' life, what did he do? He called him to the backside of the desert. So if you want to be out front, and I know I want you to show all of my, end. no, 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 no. He called Moses to the backside of the desert. And when Jacob, Jacob was at a point of change in his life, he found himself wrestling alone with God because everybody would not be able to go where God is taking you. They won't be able to hear what God is about to speak to you. Mm -mm. That's why they don't understand your dream. That's why they don't understand your vision. That's why they don't understand how you can shout and look like the bottom is falling out. Some people would not be able to handle the blessing, and you got to understand this, people of God. Some people cannot handle, will not be able to handle the blessings and the prosperity that God is about to give you. As long as they are blessed, everything is wonderful. But when it look like you're going to make it anyhow, when it look like you're coming out anyhow, they cannot handle it. And that's why God is taking you to a place where the crowd can not follow. He's leading you to the other side of Jordan. He's trying to position us for what he is getting ready to do in our life as a ministry. But if we are not careful, people will mess you up. People will mess us up. And get this, we blame the devil for a whole lot of stuff. We blame the devil for a lot of things that he has absolutely nothing to do with. Let me say that again. We blame the devil, I'm gonna put it like this, for everything. That's the devil. Mm -mm. But the devil did not, does not have, had nothing to do with what you did. It is not the devil that has messed up a lot of the saints of God. It is the people that they associate with. It is their associates. It's not the devil. You choose to associate. 
God has exposed them to you and you still choose to associate with them. People will mess with your anointing. You cannot keep the anointing of God on your life, hanging with everybody. They will stop your blessings and even keep you from reaching the next level of your destiny. You can have all of the prophecy you want to have. But if you don't learn how to go to God in prayer, if you if you got to always have a posse, mm -mm, they will mess up your anointing. Now, there are four kinds of people, four kinds of people. There are people who will add to your life. There are people who will add to your life. Then there are people who subtract from your life. And then there are people who divide. And then there are those who multiply. But I'm telling you today, you need to remove the people that subtract and divide in your life. The subtractors and dividers will slow your progress and it will stop you from becoming what God has destined you to become. It's time for all of us to reevaluate and see if the people around us can handle what God is about to do in our lives. Uh, let me say that again. It's time for us to reevaluate and see if the people around us can handle what God is about to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. How would they respond when you enter into your le next level of destiny? Because just because they say they with you today doesn't mean that they will be with you tomorrow. That doesn't mean that just because they told you I love you today that they will not turn against you tomorrow. Joseph's brothers had no problem with the day he was born. They were all crazy. Oh, my baby brother, my baby, isn't he cute? Because they were older than Joseph. But in fact, they celebrated his birth. But as time went on, they realized that Joseph was the father's favorite. And it gave him an expensive coat. And when he began to share his dream with his brothers, that, that celebratory spirit they had towards their brother turned into jealousy. <clears throat> I call it the green eye monster. Some people, and I'm gonna get, get to the meat of this lesson after a while, but I want you to understand this. Some people have no problem with you as long as you do not have a dream or a vision. They have no problem with you as long as you do not have a dream or a vision. <clears throat> and as long as you live in the world of average, everything is all right. Let me say that again. As long as you live in the world of average, everything is all right. But when you decide to move into the world of greatness, those things people will rise up against you and even try to destroy you. Say, well, I don't want to be great. I want to be great because I am not average. We serve an extraordinary Jesus. So why are we not extraordinary? We are not ordinary. We are extraordinary because we have the risen savior living on the inside of us. They like you as long as they feel better and bigger than you. But once God began to bless your life, all hell break loose. Have you experienced that? God bless you with two cents and all hell break loose. And if you want everybody to like you, if you want to say, well, I just need people to like me, then my dears and sirs, don't go anywhere in life and do nothing in life. And you will have a boatload of friends. Why? Because you're doing nothing and going nowhere in life. Mm -hmm. Because you got to understand, going places in life and moving into your destiny is not a popularity contest. You need to be able to say, oh, it's just me and Jesus. As long as I've got Jesus on the inside of me, I'm all right. Don't have to have a posse going with me and approving of my every need. And some of us need to pray, Lord, build up my self-esteem. We have been torn down and we have torn down each other so much that we don't build each other up. 
We need to provoke each other to good works. If I know you got a business, if I know you're doing this or you're doing that, and he says, sis, a brother, you're doing a good job. Keep on. God is going to bless you. We provoke each other in love, not to get upset, but provoke, provoke each other in love. And, 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 but it's imperative that we know who we are. John 1 and 12 says, but as many receive them, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So people, everybody can't go where you are going. Your destiny is never not tied to anyone who will walk away from you. If you walk away from me, it's because your destiny is not tied. My destiny is not tied to you. Anybody who can walk away from you, let them walk. Quit begging people to stay in your lives. Quit begging somebody to stay in your life when you know that it's a toxic relationship. Mm, my God. Quit begging people to stay your friend and care about you when you know that they're digging, put, putting daggers behind your back. Quit trying to force. Stop trying to force people to share your dreams and your vision. Stop trying to force people to share your dreams and your vision. Mm. It does not matter how attached you may feel to a certain person. It does not matter what they have done for you in the past or how much you think that you need to have them in your life to succeed. If they can walk away, let them walk away. Stop lowering yourself to keep them in your life. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 19. And when I read this scripture, it touched, really touched me. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. And it reads, they went out from us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. But if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's some scripture right there. We're holding on to folk that, that don't love us, that don't want to be bothered. They left you alone, and here you are. You're still running down behind them. And I believe Jesus would say, Lord, if they would just run after me, like they're running after those friends that's treating them in a kind of way. They were out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us, not, were not all of us. If a person is not walking on the same level you're walking in, they do not have the same spirit you have. If they're not walking in the same, if you love to pray and you stay prayed up, if you stay studying your word of God, and that's the level where you are, and they and they are not walking in that all of they is for a bunch of foolishness, jokes, and playing around. They do not have the same spirit that you have. Mm -mm. If a person walks away, you really did not need them in your life in the first place. You got to remember this one point right here. Your destiny is not tied to anyone who can walk away from you. Mm. Did they leave? Rejoice because, and be glad because God is about to do something new in your life. My God, I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to give me two more minutes right here. Knowing that God will allow people to exit your life so that you will be in the proper position to receive the blessing he has destined for you to receive. When people leave your life, do not allow yourself to become bitter. Face the fact that people will walk away from you. Yes, it hurt. Face the fact that people will betray you. Mm. Betrayal, put it this way, betrayal is something others do to you. But bitterness is something you do to yourself. Bitterness is something you do to yourself. Others betray you. 
but bitterness is something you do to yourself. Remember, Jesus had 12 disciples and one of them was the devil. And after Jesus healed the sick, after he healed the sick, after he raised, raised the dead and cast out devils for over three and a half years, Judas walked with Jesus. Not only did Judas walk away from Jesus, but he did what? He betrayed him. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Yet Jesus refused to become bitter. Now you talking about somebody that should have been bitter? He refused to become bitter. He looked beyond the pain of betrayal to the salvation of mankind that he was about to purchase for you and I on the cross. Mm, my God, Jesus, look at Jesus be your example. Even when Peter, one of his inner circle, because you gotta understand Jesus had 12 disciples. He chose 12 disciples. There were a total of 70 disciples, but he chose 12. But out of the 12 disciples, he had an inner circle of what? Three disciples, Peter, James, and John. That was Jesus's inner circle. But what did Peter do? He denied the Lord and Savior. He betrayed Christ, my God. But Jesus did not turn bitter. He went on. But I want you to understand tonight, in my conclusion, that when we look at our scripture text that we read, everybody did not cross Jordan. The 50 sons of the prophet did not cross Jordan. Everybody did not pick up the mantle of Elijah. Elijah and Elisha crossed the Jordan and only Elisha picked up the manna. Everybody would not go to where you are about to go. Mm, my God. They stood back, but only Elisha went with Elijah and picked up the mantle because he understand, understood because he was what they were his counterparts, the sons of the prophets. They were his counterparts. And he said, no, 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 I'm going with the man of God. And he got the blessing. And when we look at the 12th through the first 14 verse, it said, then he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Hallelujah. He got a double portion of Elijah's anointing. He was able to part the waters because he picked up Elijah's anointing. He picked up the mantle of Elijah. So regardless of how bad you want people to go with you, remember, everybody cannot go where God is taking you. You got to understand that everybody can't go where God is taking me. I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to be just like Elisha. Hold your peace. I don't want to hear it. When my leader tells me something, hold your peace. If it's not what she said, I don't want to hear it. Because mm -mm, it's upset. And, and you've got to do that. It's got to come out of your mouth. You've got to put them in place. Because Elijah said, uh-uh, we're not having this foolishness. Hold your peace. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Mm -mm. Because we're going forward in 2022. But we got to understand that everybody is not going to go where God is taking us. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord that has been shared. We ask that you will bless us, that you will help us, God, give us strength. Oh, God, that you will give us vision, that you will give us destiny. Oh, God, because we want to go where only you can take us. Lord, we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.